All right, we are going to talk about Newton's laws of motion. So Sir Isaac Newton, as you may have heard me refer to him, was a physicist in the 18th century. He basically rocked at everything. Came up with the law of gravity when he was 20. Super, super smart. He was the first person to come up with the idea that you could actually put something into orbit. And we listened to that podcast about him um, during the solar system unit. I'm not sure if you guys remember it. But he is really awesome. He was really awesome, I should say. And he came up with three laws of motion. The first being an object in motion stays in motion, or an object at rest stays at rest, until an unbalanced net force um, acts upon it, or until acted upon by another um, force. So basically, if you have a ball sitting on the floor and there's no outside forces, the object should never move. Now, with no f outside forces, the object will also never stop moving. So here on Earth, we have forces. Gravity is a force. Gravity is the reason why if I roll a ball across the floor, the ball will stop moving. It's a combination of gravity and friction. So if I were to also toss the same ball into space at a constant speed, that speed will be maintained unless that ball is acted on by another force. Okay, a net force. So um, Newton's second law of motion says a net force acting on any object causes the object to accelerate in the direction of the force. So you guys practiced net forces today. If there was a net force in a specific direction, that um, object will accelerate in the direction that the force was moving. Um, remember, acceleration is determined by the size of the object or size of the force and the mass of the object. This also was with gravity. I hope you remember that um, something's gravitational pull has to do with how large it is and how close it is. So it's very similar. Um, remember that force equals mass times acceleration. Here's a review of the units if you are not clear on units for each of those measurements. Um, and you should be able to remember that F equals MA, or force equals mass times acceleration. Newton's third law of motion, for every action or force, there's an equal or opposite reaction or force. Momentum is one of those things. It's a property of a moving object that results from its mass and velocity. So momentum has a unit P, and mass has a unit M, and velocity S. So P equals mass times speed, or velocity. If the rocket pushes the propellant, so here's our rocket, okay, and by definition, Newton's third law of motion, okay, is that if the rocket pushes the propellant backwards, so in other words, there's the flame, okay, it's going to therefore move forward. So the propellant is the fire, it shoots it backwards, and therefore it reacts by moving forwards. So that's Newton's three laws of motion. Now we're going to hear good old Tim, Tim and Moby explain it for you on brain pop and then we will be done. Thanks Moby. Hey Tim and Moby, can you tell me about Isaac Newton's three laws? From Jerome. Well, Isaac Newton was a scientist who lived in the 17th century. We have a whole movie about him so you should check it out. Anyway, Newton came up with the three laws of motion that can be used to explain how and why stuff moves. Well, yeah, these laws are still in use today, so I'd say he was pretty smart. Newton's first law states that an object in motion will stay in motion, and an object at rest will stay at rest unless an unbalanced force acts on it. You probably don't think about it this way, but when a car is moving, everything in it and on it is moving along at the same speed. If the car has to stop suddenly, the objects in and on the car will continue moving forward. Guess we should have tied those on tighter. An object's forward motion will continue until an unbalanced force acts in the opposite direction to stop it. So, our seat belts provided the unbalanced force that stopped our bodies from moving forward. But those ropes didn't provide enough force to balance out the ski's forward motion. Why didn't it keep going? Well, in this case, the force acting on the rock was friction. Friction is the resistance caused by any two objects in contact, and it always acts in the opposite direction of the motion. Newton's second law says, an object that has an unbalanced force acting on it will accelerate in the direction of that force. When you're just sitting there, two forces are acting on you all the time. 
Right now, gravity is pulling our mass toward the center of the Earth, and the upward normal force of the ground is pushing up against gravity. We could sit here all day and go nowhere because these two forces cancel out. This hill is a different story. At this angle, gravity and the normal force are not canceling each other out. Gravity wins, and we accelerate. The net force that's acting on us and making us accelerate is a combination of the normal force and gravity. Look, friction. Newton's third law is this. Forces always occur in equal and opposite pairs. When I pushed that door, it pushed right back at me with equal force. The door was the one that moved because friction between my feet and the floor combined my mass with the building's mass. The door is on hinges, which decrease friction, so it accelerates open. Maybe if you took off your roller skates. Or not. Oops. Well, that's about it for Isaac Newton's Laws of Motion. I'm gonna get Moby an ice pack.